So the Colorado wildfire has basically destroyed nearly 1,000 homes. So there's three people are missing and at least 991 homes and other buildings were destroyed as officials pursued tips. And to be real, there's probably going to be more homes destroyed and there's probably going to, they're probably going to find bodies because it's, this was like a really massive fire. So investigators are trying to determine what sparked a massive fire in a suburban area near Denver that burned neighborhoods to the ground and destroyed nearly 1,000 homes and other buildings. Three people are missing, so the Boulder County Sheriff, Joe Pell, said on Saturday authorities were pursuing tips and had executed a search warrant at one particular location, and he declined to give details. And it would be so messed up if someone purposely caused this fire. Because it would be one thing if this was like an accidental situation, like some stupid baby shower reveal thing, or like gender reveal thing. But if someone purposely started a fire and destroyed people's homes, like to like a mass scale, like it's just so wrong. So a sheriff's official confirmed one property was under investigation in the Marshall Mesa area, a region of open grassland about two miles west of Superior, a National Guard Humvee blocked access to the property, which was only one of several under investigation, the official said. Now, utility officials found no downed power lines where the fire broke out. The fire came unusually late in the year, following an extremely dry fall and amid a winter nearly devoid of snow. Conditions, experts say, certainly helped the fire spread. So at least 991 homes and other buildings were destroyed. Pell said 553 in Louisville, 332 in Superior, and 106 in unincorporated parts of the county and hundreds more were damaged. And Pell cautioned that the tally was not final. And the totals include destroyed barns, outbuildings, and other structures, but the vast majority were homes, a Boulder County spokesperson, Jennifer Churchill, said late on Saturday. So authorities had said no one was missing, but Churchill said that was due to confusion. Pell said officials were organizing cadaver teams to search for the missing. The task is com- uh, is complicated by debris from destroyed structures covered by eight inches of snow dumped overnight, he said. So at least seven people were injured in the wildfire that erupted in and around Louisville and Superior neighboring towns about 20 miles northwest of Denver with a combined population of 34,000. The blaze, which burned at least 9.4 square miles, was no longer considered an immediate threat, and snow temperatures in the single digits cast an eerie scene amid smoldering remains of homes. So the smell of smoke still permeated empty streets blocked by National Guard troops and Humvees. The conditions compounded the misery of residents who started off the new year trying to salvage what remained of their homes. And here's the thing. I have no clue if any of their homes are even going to be covered by insurance like this is such like a weird situation like would their homes actually be covered by insurance i mean depending on the company depending on the policy probably not so you have a situation where there's going to be a lot of people potentially completely destroyed financially right because not everyone gets good insurance on things that they own even with their home now typically if you have a mortgage on a home the mortgage company is going to force you to get certain types of insurance so that you can be approved for that mortgage that being said would those forced policies that they get you would it still actually end up covering something like this I don't know I really hope that they do. If it does protect a lot of these homeowners, then this would be more of like 
a hassle, not necessarily like a hundred percent destruction of their lives, right? Now their lives are going to be still kind of like messed up from this, because one they might face like physical harm because maybe they got burned or damaged in some way. They're going to deal with the mental stress. They're going to deal with having to probably uproot their lives to a whole nother location because most of them are probably not going to just stay in the same area. Like, so there's going to be a lot of massive changes to their lives no matter what because of this situation. But I'm hoping that at least, at the very least, they are not financially destroyed because the insurance policies that they have would end up actually covering for them. Like that is something that I really hope because we're talking easily like two hundred thousand dollar plus homes, and if you have a really high mortgage on that and your insurance policy doesn't cover it, that's a lot of money that you're in the hole for. So utility crews struggle to restore electricity and gas service to homes that survived, and dozens lined up to get space heaters, bottled water, and blankets at Red Cross shelters. Which, by the way, I like that the Red Cross does this, but if you don't know much about the Red Cross, the Red Cross has a history of being very corrupt. Like, it gets very very disturbing when it comes down to the Red Cross as to the repeated acts of corruption that they've done. So I think it's good that they're helping it out, but you always got to be kind of like iffy when it comes down to the Red Cross, which is sad. And Excel Energy urged residents to use fireplaces in wood stoves to stay warm and keep pipes from freezing. At a Salvation Army distribution center at the YMCA in Lafayette, just north of Superior, Monarch High School seniors Noah Saracen and his twin brother Gavin had been volunteering for two days. That's pretty awesome. Directing traffic and distributing donations. We have a house, no heat, but we still have a house, Noah Saracen said. That's pretty cool, right? Like, this kind of, like, statement is something that a lot of people really need to think about. Not just in, like, a situation like this, but in life in general, right? Like, we have a house, no heat, but we still have a house. Basically being like, hey, be grateful for what you do end up having because (laughs) there are people probably very close to you not in that good of a situation. So I just want to make sure that everyone else has heat on this very cold day. Like that's a really good person. So Hillary and Patrick Wallace picked up two heaters, then ordered two hot chocolate mochas at a nearby cafe. The superior couple couldn't find a hotel and were contemplating hiking two miles back to their home. Their neighborhood was still blocked to traffic and the family slept in one room on New Year's Eve. Both teared up when a man entered the shop and joked aloud that he lost his coffee mugs and everything else in the fire. The man was in good spirits, laughing at the irony of the situation. I have a space heater and a house to put it in. I don't even know what to say to them, Hillary said. Superior resident Jeff Markley arrived arrived in his truck to pick up a heater. He said he felt lucky to just be displaced, since his home is intact. We're making do, staying with friends, and upbeat for the new year. Gotta be better than this last one, Markley said. Not everyone felt as positive. It's bittersweet because we have our house, but our friends don't, and our neighbors don't, said Louisville resident Judy Givens, as she picked up a heater with her husband. We thought 2022 might be better, And then we had Omicron, and now we have this, and it's not starting out very well. So I thought that was a pretty interesting read. And again, like, this is why when it comes down to, like, insurance, right? You always want to get insurance 
to prepare for the worst, but you should always expect for the, well, hope for the best, right? So we could take this into like another example, right? This is why you should always have health insurance because you don't know when something crazy might happen and you're just completely screwed, right? You might not be able to work again, but if you have a good enough health insurance that might be able to cover you for a while. Or if you have people who are like relying on you, your time or your money is very important for you to end up having life insurance, right? Because when you have life insurance, you could end up, you know, God forbid that you were to pass away due to some means. That money, even though it won't actually replace you, it can replace some of the things that you did to make life easier on the people that are left behind. So for example, let's say that you are the breadwinner of the family, maybe you get a husband or wife, and you end up passing away. By the way, you also have kids, right? Well, if you were to pass away, being the breadwinner, if you have a good life insurance policy, that money can end up being used to pay for daycare, pay for your loss of income that you contributed to the family because you are the breadwinner so that the person, your spouse, that is left behind, they could end up improving their skills to the extent that they can make more money so that they're not going to need to rely on that. But also, it would allow them to pay off any debts that they might have or you guys had before you passed away. It would allow them to take care of their kids financially that are left behind without having to worry too much. But more than that, it would allow them to actually be able to mourn your loss without having to just stress and go day to day simply to live and pay bills. So there's always different ways to look at the things, but just keep that in mind. Always prepare for the worst, but always hope for the best. If you want to learn how to get out of debt and master your money in a very simple way, go to 40 com. And by the way, I think it's pr- pretty cool that the Guardian has been able to raise, what, 1.25 million dollars for their goal, but they actually have like 1,556,681 dollars. Like, I mean, that's pretty cool. But what's also kind of interesting about like a lot of these news articles is that so many of these like news publications end up basically copying and paste basically everything from each other. Like, it's pretty hilarious if you were to actually like look at it. So, like, CNN, Fox, New York Post. Associated Press, all these different sites, all basically like copy and paste one another. It's just funny.